everyone, I'm Victoria and today I've got another Top 5 Wednesday for you. What's Top 5 Wednesday? It's a Goodreads group that was started by Lainey from Ginger Reads Lainey and is now moderated by Sam from Thoughts on Tomes. Today's topic are our top 5 favorite books that take place in a non-Eurocentric or North American location or our favorite books that have a fantasy world, again, that is, is inspired by an area or land not found in Europe or North America. So let's dive right in. My first choice is The Forbidden Wish by Jessica Corey. This is an Aladdin retelling, so of course this fantasy takes place in a Middle East inspired land. Jessica Corey mentions in her afterwards that her grandfather is actually from Lebanon and she wanted to write a story that was inspired by the tales of his home. As I said, this is an Aladdin retelling, but we do have a little bit of a twist in that the genie is actually a female. Overall, I really enjoyed this book and thought that it avoided a lot of traps that YA tends to fall into. There is a romance in this, but it is not insta-love, nor is there a love triangle. We also have a lot of strong female characters, both emotionally and physically. There isn't a lot of girl on girl hate in this, and there are really strong female friendships. I also like the fact that some things that could have been perceived as plot holes in the beginning were actually tied up in the end. All of the characters act in a way that is consistent with their character. They all have believable motivation and their actions make sense within the context of the story. So I definitely would recommend this as a wonderful fantasy that takes place in a world that is not inspired by Europe or North America. Next up, we have the Royals of Daria series by Susan K. Quinn. This is a three book series consisting of third daughter, second daughter, and first daughter. And the fantasy world for this is inspired by India. So we follow our main character, Aniri, who is the third daughter of the Queen of Daria. At the beginning, she's a little immature and reckless and heedless, but throughout the entire three books, we follow her wonderful character arc as she becomes a competent leader. In addition, there are some steampunk elements with some flying ships, and there is a romance, but it is believable and takes place over a nice amount of time. I also love the fact that this is kind of a matriarchal society, and so the queens and her daughters are very important. And in order for a country to seem legitimate, they need to have a queen. And so actually the quote-unquote barbarians to the north propose a marriage between their leader and the third daughter, Aniri. Overall, I really enjoyed this series. This author is an indie author, and so I believe her ebook right now on Amazon is actually free for a limited time if you wanna check that out. Again, the series is a ton of fun and a wonderfully light romantic fantasy inspired by India. Moving on, we have Eon and Iona by Alison Goodman. So this is a YA fantasy series, or duology actually, that takes place in a land that is inspired by Asia, specifically China. So in the first book, we follow Iona, who is masquerading as a boy, Eon, in order to train and hopefully be a dragon eye, which are 12 people that can control the 12 energy dragons that are used to help control the weather throughout the land. I will say that this series is not for everyone. Iona is a difficult character to like. I think she is very realistic in her portrayal. She does not always make the wisest choices, and definitely in hindsight, she hurts herself and hinders herself more than helps herself a wild cat. But I thought that it was really realistic, her portrayal. If she is found out to actually be a girl instead of a boy, then her punishment is death. So I understand kind of the choices that she makes, even though they might not be the best choices. I definitely enjoy both these books a lot and would recommend you reading them. They are a little bit different than some other YA. Again, in this first one, there really isn't any romance. There is a little bit in the second one, but there's no sort of insta-love. There's sort of a love triangle, but not really sort of done differently. And these are a little different. We also have a trans character and a eunuch character. So some things that you don't see too much in YA literature. Next up, we have Thorn by Intisada Kanani. This is a retelling of the Goose Girl fairy tale. And while the Goose Girl herself, Alira, comes from a land that is kind of more your traditional European setting, the land that she travels to is not, is loosely based on a Middle Eastern setting. So I will say that the world building here isn't explicit throwing it in your face that this is a Middle Eastern setting. 
The climate isn't exactly the same, but a lot of the descriptions of clothing and architecture and food are reminiscent of that. So it's definitely dealt with a lighter hand, but it is obvious that this is not a European setting. This is a fantastic retelling of the tale, in case you didn't know. The Goose Girl is about a princess who, unfortunately, through magic, not of her doing, is forced to change places with her maid. So her maid becomes a princess and she is now the maid. She travels with this new princess to a homeland where this princess is supposed to marry the prince. But upon getting there, she is made into the Goose Girl who basically has to take care of the geese. This is a fantastic retelling, as I said before. There's so much more depth to it. Um, Alira is a character maybe a little bit unlike some of the others in YA literature. She definitely doesn't have as much agency, she kind of allows things to happen to her, but that's the whole point is this character arc of hers is wonderful. We get to see her stand up in the end and deal with her situation. There is a romance in this, but it is a slow burn romance. It is not insta love and there is no triangle. She is also an indie author and I definitely would encourage you to check out this story for a wonderful tale with a land not inspired by Europe or North America. There's also a talking horse, which is kind of amazing, frankly. And last but not least is The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. Now, okay, full confession here, I have not finished reading this book, but I'm going to include it anyway because what I've read so far is really fantastic. This is an epic fantasy, adult fantasy, that is set in a world that is heavily inspired by Asia and again, specifically China. Uh, this is wonderful. We follow two main characters as there is a revolution occurring to kind of overthrow the empire. But at the same time, there are so many side characters that we get to follow and see how the revolution has, and the empire itself has touched their lives. I highly recommend this if you want something with a little more weight to it, a little bit more meat, something you can really sink your teeth into. The world building in this is fantastic. There's also an element of steampunk in it, and this one also has uh, flying airships in it, which is wonderful. And I can't recommend this enough. So that's it. Those are my top five picks for books with lands inspired by non-Eurocentric or North American places. Thank you very much for watching. What are your favorite books? I'm always curious. Making this list, I found that I didn't read as many books set in other countries or relating to magical lands inspired by other countries than I really thought that I had. So I would love to hear some recommendations down below. Please let me know. And as always, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.